Oh, well, good afternoon. My name is uh, Chad Amborn, and I'm the pastor for Westside Vineyard in West Duluth. It's where Nathan and his family um, attend church. On behalf of Nathan's mother, Christy, Nathan's stepfather, David, and the rest of Nathan's family, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for coming out um, to show your support, and to show your love for Nathan. Man. Everybody up in the balcony, it's a lot easier for you guys to see what's going on down here, everybody, but... If you're sitting down on the floor, why don't you just take a look around? It's awesome. You know, we are here today to share our grief together. We're here to mourn together, um, to comfort, and to encourage one another as family and friends. However, we're also here to celebrate Nathan's life. Because even though he was young, he lived a life, he lived his life extremely well. It was a life that was well lived. Obviously, if you look around and you did, you can see how many people he impacted. And I know that this is just a small fraction. Knowing Nathan, I know that he wouldn't want us to bury our heads into our hands and uh, dwell on his loss. He'd be encouraging us to dwell on all that we've gained through knowing him. Encouraging us to have a good time, to laugh with one another, to, to joke with one another, to smile together. And, uh, I mean, if you knew Nathan, then you knew that he liked to have fun. And so he would want us all to be having fun together as well. Today isn't an easy day for any of us. However, I believe that our feelings and our emotions are, are very understood. I believe that they're even welcomed and that they're embraced by our Father in Heaven because Jesus also understood what it was like to lose. He understood loss and he cried when he lost his friend as well. So with that, I'd like to say an opening prayer if you'd bow your heads with me. Father God, I thank you that you are a God of comfort, that you are a God of peace. My prayer is that today as we uh, remember Nathan and as we celebrate his life, that you would, you would bring us that peace and that comfort. And I just ask that you would meet each and every one of us that's here today, that you would meet us right now and allow us to experience your comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. On Friday, November 18th, 2016, the world lost an amazing, beautiful young man in a tragic car accident, Nathan Warren Gould of Holyoke. He was born to Jim and Christy Gould in Duluth on December 6th, 1999. He was a junior at Carleton High School and was a former student at Renshaw. Nathan was kind-hearted, he was soft-spoken, and gen he was a genuine young man who loved Boston Bruins hockey, skateboarding, was a state contender for S Superior Shooting Club, and he loved and was loved by Jesus. Nathan was known for looking after others and sharing his love and his infectious smile to everyone who encountered him. He is preceded in death by his father, Jim, his grandparents, Warren and Simone Gould, grandmother, Darlene, Van Busker, great-grandfathers, -grand Willard Van Vickel, and Richard Gray. Nathan is survived by his mother, Christy Gould, brother, James Vick, Hunter Nemers, sister, Andrea Gould, his nephew, Colby Burnt, 
stepfather David Van Busker, grandmother Millie Van Vickle, and countless number of aunts and uncles, friends, family, and loved ones who are not forgotten. The celebration of life is here, obviously. 11 a.m. Saturday, November 26th in the Encounter Gym. In lieu of flowers, the family asks that any donations be sent to the Nathan Warren Gould Scholarship. Which is honoring students of exceptional character, kindness, and compassion. And please contact Joel and Trish Swanson, both are staff. Renshaw High School. So, Nathan, <laughs> my wife and I, Aubrey, my three children, had the opportunity to. Uh, to hang out and share a meal with Nathan's family last night. You know, this past week has been a roller coaster of emotions for, I think, everyone that knew Nathan. Um, but I, I, I gotta say, last night, we all shared some really good stories. A lot of good memories. And as ironic as it might sound, a lot of laughs. Some really good laughs. And I believe that unity, when people get together, that unity, it fosters strength. And I know we all felt a little stronger, embraced by peace when we left the dinner table last night. My wife and I met Nathan some years ago when, we, when he um, and his family first came to Westside Vineyard. And he wasn't quite um, a young man at the time. <laughs> I'd say he was still a boy. In fact, I didn't think he was growing any, anything. It was just peat <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, but he was very soft-spoken, if he even did speak. Um, he always had a really calm, peaceful disposition and, and a gentle grin. And from time to time, that gentle grin would become this, this smile that was as wide as the Grand Canyon. That smile was infectious. And uh, when he did, everyone else in the room did. You know, it wasn't too long after Nathan, Christy, and Dave were, were coming to Westside Vineyard that uh, Nathan started coming to the youth group uh, that my wife and I hosted in our house for all the kids. And for a while, Nathan was really timid. He was shy. He was gentle. And he was just a quiet, quiet boy. He was a quiet boy. But as he became a little more comfortable in this... Uh, crazy and loud environment, which I think still reflects the youth that, that attend our church. Um, he realized that he was safe. He realized that he was cared for and that he was loved, not only by my wife and I, but um, all the other kids that he'd eventually come to know. as his friends, his brothers, and his sisters. The bond that was created in what I'd call Westside Vineyard's first youth group was strong, it was deep, it was genuine, it was inseparable, it was full of love, tons of honesty, safety, diversity. The best way that I could put it is you guys were family still are, but you guys, you guys were family. He not only uh, became a regular at our youth group, 
in church. But he became a regular in our home. As he and my daughters and my son became extremely close. Um, I remember <laughs> I remember coming home from, from work or uh, just whatever the heck I was doing. You know, I was out and about from time to time. But I remember coming home and 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 so often I'd walk in the door thinking nobody's home, but Nathan was there. <laughs> and he was sleeping. Napping, I should say. He was always napping. But he was napping on my floor in the living room. He never sat or slept on the couch. He never napped on the couch. Every time I'd see him, I'd look down, and he would be laying at the, the foot of the, uh, the couch with a blanket covered over his head. <laughs> I remember... Uh, He spent a lot of time with my son, skateboarding, playing video games, heading out to the back and playing basketball. He was a big brother to Sonny. He and my daughter Cecilia got along really well, and sometimes not so well. Sometimes they'd argue with each other, and, and to the point I, I wondered if they actually were siblings, seriously. Um, they actually reminded us of an old married couple. Not sure if you guys all knew this, but, but Nathan was a really fussy eater. No. And he never ate certain types of foods, such as tacos or chili. I think anything that was mixed. He just didn't eat it. Or within certain food groups. But somehow my wife, Aubrey, and... Uh, it, she convinced him to try everything when he was at the house at least once. Um, and he, he had grown to, to like a lot of the very food that he said was disgusting and that he wouldn't eat. I don't know if he ate it at your house, but when he came, maybe he was just being nice. But he really seemed to, to love it. And when he said he didn't like tacos, you can't come into our home and not like tacos. <laughs> that doesn't work. And so he eventually did eat them. Uh, my daughter Sophia and Nathan even, even shared a bond that I think resembled more sister and brother than, than just simple friends. And Nathan and I had, man, we had so many talks. Some were on a, on a really deep, intimate, personal level. And sometimes we just sat around and chilled and, and talked about dumb, stupid stuff. But we formed a, a, bro, a, a bond that, that I'm extremely, to this day, proud of. I can tell you story after story about our family's relationship with Nathan and, and go down memory lane and share with you all. I don't know how his relationship with us had such a, an amazing impact, but we'd, I think, be here for hours and hours and hours. And quite honestly, you don't need to hear all of our stories to understand the young man that you all knew. Each of you have similar stories to tell, similar memories to look back on. And if you knew Nathan, then you understood that he impacted your life in a very unique, positive, life-changing way. And like I said, if you look around this room, that's evident. You know, I simply wanted to share a tiny bit of information with you and some memories because it's not very often that you go to a funeral or a celebration of life and the person standing before you doing that funeral can truly relate to the emotions that you're feeling about the loved one that, you say, that you're saying goodbye to. I just wanted you all to know that I do. That I understand and I mourn with you and I grieve with you. And we'll celebrate with you. I love Nathan. However, the story of Nathan Gould, <laughs> I don't believe has ended at all. In fact, in many ways, I think it's begun. It's just beginning. He's not physically with us, but he is with us. You know, at 16 years old, Nathan has left all of us with a legacy. 
16 years old, and he left a legacy. You know, it's a legacy that's marked by peace, it's marked by joy, it's marked by love. And that might sound cliche, but couldn't be further from the truth. You know, these were his characteristics from the time that I met him, and they remained his characteristics on the last day that he was with us. But what makes his life, the way he lived, his characteristics, what, what made that the legacy? What made it a legacy? Well, you see, I, I don't think many adults, let alone young adults, leave behind something that others choose to pick up and carry on with the intentions of making a difference in the lives of those around them, including the lives of oneself. But from what I've seen so far, and this is proof again, just standing here, but what I've seen so far over the last week, what I've heard so far over the last week, those who knew Nathan are doing exactly that. Friends and family are, are spreading peace, they're spreading joy, they're spreading love with one another, and even within the communities that he touched. What Nathan had, who he was, and what he represented is contagious. Especially in a world that's so often the opposite of what Nathan exhibited. Because we all thirst for peace. Each and every one of us thirst for peace. We all want joy in our life. And we all want to be loved. And we all want to share love. And it becomes infectious when we've experienced a little bit of that. And we want to see it continue in not only our own lives, but in the lives of those around us. So with that... I'm going to ask that Aubrey and Jerry come up and share a song with us. church that we're from, we um, encourage you, these are worship songs, and so we encourage you to worship with us. There'll be words on the back. Um, they're not meant to be a performance, but songs to Jesus about our boy. Oh.
Some letters to Nathan. To my sweet little brother, Nathan. Nathan, where do I begin? You were what I believe is the best brother anyone could ask for. I'll never forget all the memories we shared together, like when we used to ride four-wheelers and dirt bikes together, or stay up all night after new video games were released and play them till the wee hours of the morning. I'll never forget the last couple trips that we went on together these past summers when we went to the Dells and laughed all night long with our friends, or when we went to the Valley Fair and the Mall of America this summer and we all went to Hooters and bought matching shirts. <laughs> That'd be a big shirt, James. Mm -hmm. You always had good time when you were with me and my friends, and we always had a good time when we were around family. That's what I'm gonna miss the most. You were the one that would always laugh at everything. You would always smile, and I always felt relaxed when you were around. You were loved by so many people, and I am honored to be your brother. I know someday we will all be together again, and I can't wait, but until then I promise that I will take care of Mom and Andrea. I love the end of this poem from Mr. Deeds, which we watched together. I think it's perfect for us. But when I die, Nathan, you better say cheers, because me and you are hanging out at the pearly gates. I'll bring the beers. I love you, buddy. I always remember you. Love your proud big brother, James. Now for technology. The next one from Andrea. Hey, poopy. I still remember when I found out I was gonna have another brother, being so mad that I'd have another brother and afraid that you and James would team up against me. Turns out that having another little brother was one of the best things that happened in my life. I have the two best brothers a girl could ask for. You can't seem to let me win at this argument of who loves each other more, can you? Reminding me of the text message even after you're gone. Dang kid, that was a good move. But guess what? I still love you more than you will ever know. So I win, Poopy. Still look at my phone every day, hoping to see a text from you. FaceTime, a Snapchat, a call. Missing those heart-to-hearts we had. The, okay, I'm gonna run this by you before I ask mom. <laughs> Calls every day. <laughs> I'm reminded that you're not here and my heart breaks even more. Listening to Colby wanting Uncle Nate. and looking out at the window for you to remind, reminding him that you're no longer here to give him a big hug or kiss or play outside with him breaks me down every time. I just keep telling him you're in heaven and that you're his angel looking over him. I'm trying to hold on to every last memory I have of you, Poopy. All your smiles, your infectious laughs, your presence when you walk into the room. Kid, you made everyone's day a better one. I love you so much and I'll see you again someday. Love. Your big sister. You wanna come up, Mama? This 
is really neat. So I, um, first off, thank you guys. Um, I went to write a letter and I couldn't even find the words. There's so many things about Nathan that I'm going to miss. He was an amazing, amazing boy. And I know I, I'm biased, but I got a lot of other mothers that took him under his wing. I agree. But I wanted to share something with you. Because the other day, a dear friend of mine got a hold of me on text. And he said, have you read The Jesus Calling for today? And um, I hadn't. The one thing that I want to remind all of us is that the only way that we can get through this is together and through God. That's it. Because it doesn't make any sense to me, and it hurts, and I know that life is going to go on, but I also know that only he can heal and he works through us. So when you guys reach out to me with your stories, and please censor them for a while, when you reach out to me or I have your hugs or when I tell you guys I hope you don't mind another mother, that helps me. Thankfulness takes the sting out of adversity. That is why I have instructed you to give thanks for everything. There is an element of mystery in this transaction. You give me thanks regardless of your feelings, and I give you joy regardless of your circumstances. This is a spiritual act of obedience, at times blind obedience, to people who don't know me intimately, it can seem irrational and even impossible to thank me for heart-trending hardships. Nonetheless, those who obey me in this way are invariably blessed, even though difficulties may remain. Thankfulness opens your heart to my presence and your mind to my thoughts. You may still be in the same place with the same set of circumstances, but it is if a light has been switched on, enabling you to see from my perspective. It is the light of my presence that removes the sting from adversity. I can tell you that even as my heart is shattered and broken, I have so many things to be thankful for and I want you all to remember that. You do too. The stories of Nathan standing up to bullies. Don't tell Wendy's this, but apparently he gave food to people who didn't have any money. The gentleman he was, how he respected his mom and he loved his family. The times that he told me that he needed to take a break from church but assured me that he still believed in God. And he went back. He went back, in fact, the night I asked him to pick up the mail, he says, well, I would, but actually I'm going to church, which I had to send to Aubrey because I was so happy. I'm thankful that even though it was only 16 years that I got to know the joy of an amazing kid who very seldom ever lost his temper. He missed his dad. He talked the last couple months about his dad. He was six when he died, and he never really talked much about him. But let me share you this wonderful God moment that he had. Nathan was having an extremely hard time because he couldn't remember. So we went to Chad and Aubrey's and Aubrey bring the mother, you know, mothered him. And he went out to pray with Chad alone. 
And he cried because he didn't have any memories. He just wanted a memory. So he prayed with Chad. We went to church that night, or that after, it wasn't that night, it was a couple days after, and we went to Super One to, to get lunch stuff. And by the way, I was looking through our text messages since this summer, and I don't think the kid had ever said honey buns and Mountain Dew so many times in his text. That's all he wanted, honey buns and Mountain Dew. But we walked into the, the, the grocery store and we stood in the produce department and he stopped and he closed his eyes and he goes, Mom, do you smell that? And I'm like, what do you smell? And he goes, it's peaches. Dad brought a peach in his lunchbox every day. He goes, I have a memory. And I said, you have a God moment. And it was those little moments that we looked forward to. So if I can ask all of you today, I really, really want you to look for those God moments. Because yes, he's not here physically with us, but he's in heaven. He's with our papa, and he's with his dad, and it's going to hurt for a while, and life will never be the same, but it's going to be okay. I always say that after the casserole dishes are cleaned and life goes on, that's when it's the hardest, and that's when we're really, all of us are going to need each other. And if one thing, if there's one thing in this mom's heart, I just ask that the loss of Nathan open you up to the love of God because he's there. He's there. trick me. All right, there's a letter that I'd like to read. It's really, it's just really small, but it's a letter from a family friend that says, um, we love you all so much. I wish I could take away all your pain. The sunset was so beautiful last night. And then we saw a heart in the clouds. I told Tate, I know it was Nathan telling us he's okay and he loves everyone. I just read your message to my family. Your words mean the world to us. Tatum is having a very hard time. She truly loved him. She always will. You are a beautiful family. Please know that our hearts are with all of you. Nathan is a special soul and we love you. I believe everybody in this room, their hearts echo that. <clears throat> so I'm going to read a, a scripture out of the Bible, and it is not the most, actually I don't know if I've ever heard it in a funeral before, or a celebration of life. That's one thing that Nathan loved. <laughs> we weren't very traditional. I was going to dress up too, because we used to joke about me dressing up in a suit and a tie to go preach. And Nathan used to laugh about it and be like, yeah, that would be really funny. You should do that sometime. Um, as you see, I'm still stubborn. <laughs> so this is out of Romans. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your, spirit, your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. 
Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not, overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, we invite you to worship with us.
so the scripture that I had read, like I said, isn't your uh, typical scripture reading for, for a funeral or a celebration of life, but as I mentioned earlier, I believe that we are celebrating a life that was well lived. I believe Nathan lived a well life, or lived well his life. And I also believe that he lived his life according to the scripture that I did read. And that's why we put it in tonight. See, there's all, when we, when we gather for this kind of stuff, there's usually these formats for funerals, and there's things to say, and traditions, and all this kind of stuff. And I think one of the things that Nathan liked, and one of the things that I still like, is that we choose to throw that stuff out the window most of the time. Because it's not about that. It's about personal relationship with Jesus. And that's what Nathan had. And I honestly believe that Nathan preached this very scripture every single day of his life. He preached it. Now you may not have heard him preach it to you. But he preached it. You see, there was a saying by a man named Francis of Assisi. He once said, always preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Nathan didn't have to always use words. He just lived it. That scripture I read, he lived that. If you know him, if you had any time to spend with him, then you know that what I'm saying is true. You know that his life was marked by peace. Sure, he struggles. We all do. But it was marked by peace. Obviously, if you knew him, then you knew he had joy. Because you've seen it all over his face. Sure, he struggled. There was times that he was sad. And he, and, and, and he had a hard time. And there wasn't a smile, it was a frown. But you know what? His life itself was marked by joy. And if you knew him, then you definitely can't argue the fact that it wasn't marked with love. That boy loved people. Even if he was mad at somebody, he just loved people. Believe it or not, it was one of the things that I really... When you're 43 years old, like I am, and we'll just forward or rewind back a couple years. When you are, say, 40 years old, and you look to a 13-year-old for how to live life, it's a humbling experience. And this isn't part of what I was going to talk about, which is also normal for me. <laughs> But it's hitting me now because I remember often thinking about Nathan and how he lived his life and how there was so much joy and how um, he, just, he just had so much love in his heart and how he would mingle with everyone in small group after he warmed up, after he started. I mean, at first, like I said, he was so shy, he was so quiet, and, but once he broke through his shell, it was like a little, you know, a little chicken or whatever. What are they called? Chicks, whatever. Breaking through a little shell or whatever. And I mean, that's what he did. And, and, and once he did, I mean, it was all over. It was all over. I mean, instead of Nathan being on the sidelines in the group, Nathan was in the middle. He was amongst everybody else. And something that I learned from him is how much just one young man can love people. And I had shared before that I spent many times just hanging out with him and praying for him and just allowing him to share his life with me. And, uh, and someone like me, with my past and my history, was humbled. And he is one of 
a few that have actually taught me how to love other people other than Jesus Christ but this, this young man taught me how to love other people that's a gift how many of you can say that he taught you how to find peace how to find joy how to just be loved or love raise your hand Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. There was a letter that was, uh, that was written. And I wasn't going to read it, but I'm, I'm going to now. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say who wrote this, but this is just recent. And the letter says this, The day Nathan passed... He walked me to my car and told me to drive home safe. He was so kind-hearted and the sweetest boy I've ever met. I struggled really bad with Nathan's passing, but on Sunday, November 20th, I went to your church and listened to the grieving sermon. One sentence that really spoke to me was when she said, when our boy is in that much pain and damage, you just want him to go home. At that time, I got some peace knowing that Nathan is in such a better place with our God. I love Nathan, and I will miss him forever. The reason why I wanted to throw that letter in is because there's really two things to this. There's two points to this letter. I don't know if this person even is here tonight or today, and I don't know if this person even understands how awesome this letter is. Because the beginning of this letter reveals Nathan's heart. It's a heart of peace, it's a heart of joy, and it's a heart of love. I've been talking about this. I've watched these characteristics not only grow in Nathan over the years that I've known him, but I've seen them become more and more and more apparent in his life. And he wasn't only maturing as a young man, but um, he was maturing in the fruits of the Spirit because of knowing God. And as we grow in our relationships with God, he begins to prune us of a bunch of crappy stuff in our life. And then he begins to nurture the qualities that reflect Jesus. Now, this letter isn't the only example of, of Nathan's heart towards others. I've, I've heard stories about um, how he was with many of you guys in school um, and, and stories from sitting around with family. And, and I've, I've heard story upon story of how Nathan was was just so kind-hearted and, and went out of his way to care for others. Um, and I'm sure that you can recollect similar stories or encounters with, with Nathan if you had a relationship with him. Now I can tell you that the love that he had for his mother was a reflection of how Jesus loves and cares for us. How he cared and loved for my eight-year-old son was a reflection. How he cared for and even prayed for his friends in youth group was a reflection. Nathan simply lived this thing out. Now the second part of this letter that ex, uh, that, that's important is it explains how we move forward. This letter actually explains how we move forward. You see, we'll never forget Nathan. We'll always miss him. But he'll always be in our hearts. And he'll always be in our minds. And we can find peace in knowing that he loved Jesus, and Jesus loved and still does love him. And because of that, he's with our Father in heaven. Now, one day we'll get to meet up with him again. And what I'm pretty stoked about is um, I get to see that giant smile, and I'm, I, I, I swear his lovely locks of hair. I swear. <laughs> I, man, I was so jealous of this hockey here. Oh my gosh. In case you can t I don't have it. So we move forward because <clears throat> we know that what he shared with us is, a, is genuine. And, and, and we should be encouraged to give away what he gave to us. 
He did it extremely naturally, and, and, and his heart was that the world would actually live like this. That was his heart. We move forward because we see a life that was well lived, a legacy left behind for us to pick up and carry on with. That's what a legacy does. A legacy is something that you look back at and you say, you know what, I want to carry that and move that forward. See, when it's not a legacy, all you do is reminisce. You sit back and you think about it and you, and you have memories and go, yeah, that was really cool. But a legacy, when somebody leaves something behind, it's because you want to take what he had and spread it. It should motivate us to understand better the nature of his characteristics. I don't know about you, but it has done that to me. It's motivated me to understand the nature of his characteristics. What was the nature? Why was he so loving? Why was he so kind? Why, why did he have so much peace? Why? Because it reflected the heart in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now we can move forward because we trust that God loves us and that he loves Nathan. And though we don't always understand circumstances and like what just happened but God does care for us he did care for and does care for Nathan enough to watch over us here for a period of time and guess what enough to bring us home in his arms when it's time I'm going to leave you with uh, one psalm for those of you this is a this is an extremely good psalm in, 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 the, in the Bible that is it's meant to encourage and strengthen you. It's Psalm 121, which ironically, I'm preaching on this Sunday. Next Sunday. Whatever. It's still a good psalm. All right, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. You guys can hear downstairs is the skate park so you're hearing all those little ones have fun little and big ones but that's what nathan would have wanted so because that's where he would be right now he probably is
did not believe that Jesus died for us, if we did not believe that he was risen, that we would not have hope. And we have hope because of the death of Jesus, because of the sacrifice so that we can know that our boy, our sweet, sweet boy, is in paradise. So those of you that believe and even those of you that don't and maybe want to, will you raise your hands with me? Will you raise your hands? Nathan's, Nathan's story is um, just beginning. You know, sometimes as a, uh, as a, I can't speak for every pastor, right? I can only speak for myself, but as a pastor, sometimes, sometimes my face does this. And in, in times of loss with Nathan like it, it shook me to, to my core it did um, but the strength exhibited by Christy was the first thing that hit me that went okay I'm not going to waver and what just took place just now during that last song and seeing and hearing shows me that, uh, that God is good. He is. You know, Paul once said that he becomes all things so that he might save a, a few. He doesn't say that he's trying to go evangelize the world and do all that kind of stuff and I'm going to go, you know, get a bunch of notches on my belt. What Paul was doing was he just had a hope that just a few people would accept and follow Christ. He was a realist. He knew that the world wouldn't all accept God. Just a few. I believe that I know, I don't believe, I know that Nathan had the same desire for his friends and, and, and people in general that they would, just a few, would come to know him and experience some of the stuff that he got to experience. So I think a lot of you did just now. I think a lot of you experienced what we would call the Holy Spirit. But 
that's, uh, I, you know, I'd like to, uh, actually, on behalf of, of Nathan, what I'd like to do is, I do, I, I, I want to invite anybody that's in this room that wants to know more about what Nathan had or wants to know more about Jesus, I invite you to go and seek that out first and foremost. But go find a church. Like, th th we don't, trust me, we don't care if you get, we don't actually, we can't, fit. we can't fit all of you. Some of you guys came last week and we just can't. But I, I, I'm not a jealous pastor like that. Man, I just, all I want to see is a bunch of people fall in love with Jesus, man. And whatever, whatever church you connect with, I mean, that's not where God is. God is here, even right now. But that connection is very important because it's a family. And once you find that family and, and you allow them to love you and you learn how to love back, it's a blessing. It's a blessing that you don't want to miss out on. So I just encourage you guys, if you're in any kind of a search, just go find one. Go, go check it out. Just go check one out. I'm going to close. I just want to pray. If you guys want to bow your heads with me. So, Father, I thank you once again um, for allowing us to have known Nathan. Would you personally connect with each and every one of us today at some point if you haven't already and allow us to experience your comfort allow us to experience your peace Father God even your joy Lord I, I ask that your peace which transcends all understanding all comprehension all human ability to comprehend would that peace guard over each and every one of our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay. I think there was some students. We're going to get the, um, the slideshow going. And then I think there were some students um, from Renshaw that wanted to come up and read a eulogy. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Someone? Someone? What, what? Say what, what? Come on up. So um, as we, because I know these little babies are getting restless, God bless the children right now because that's a lot, right? It's hard for babies. Um, it's hard for all of us, actually. So we're going to have them come up and read this eulogy from their school. We're going to play the slideshow, and then, because it's my tendency to be the organizer, um, <laughs> What, what's going to happen after that is that we are going to continue to leave this mic on, up on the stage, or kind of close to the stage. We want you guys during, as we eat, as we share a meal together, we don't want the, the stories to end. And so if you feel comfortable and you would like to, um, we would love for you to come up and, and share stories as we get kind of settled and we eat. Also at the tables, um, we're going to have notepads and pens at every single table. And there's a box back there. And it's a box of memories for Nathan's family that's going to stay with his mom. If you could just be so kind as while you're having dinner, maybe you're not, maybe being behind the mic is not your thing. And that's okay because a lot of the memories that are super precious are ones that are just between you and Nathan, right? But if you're willing to share those things, write them down on the, the notepad, fold them up, put them in that box, and that way Christy can every once in a while go into that box, reach in, and grab a memory about our boy. So we're gonna have them read, we'll have the slideshow. After the slideshow, I'm gonna welcome the family to go ahead and release back to the um, food area. We need to be able to set up tables and chairs. So we're gonna let them go, get their food, get settled. If you're sitting at those back tables, we're gonna have you get up at that time. And we're slowly gonna start having people filter out. So here's the trick. You have to stay where you are, because if y'all get up, it's gonna be a cluster. And you don't wanna see me in a cluster. Nathan loved me, but he also knew not to test me. Um, huh? He knew, but he never did. Oh, I just love him. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna let them read. We'll come back. When I think
think of Nathan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> when I think of Nathan, I think of his bright smile, his great sense of humor, and most of all, his kind heart. Nathan affected the lives of everyone around him by making people laugh and being a great friend to everyone he met. Ever since I can remember, Nathan has been looking out for others, and he's always been an amazing friend. When we were in elementary school, Nathan and I would ride the bus together. And whenever I wasn't on the bus after school, Nathan would walk my little sister across the street to my house. And it was a little thing, but it stayed in my head after all these years. I've heard a lot of great memories of Nathan in the last week, but one of my favorites was told to me by a good friend of mine. He said, the first memory I had with Nathan was on the bus when I was really little. It was my first day of school ever. I was crying and I wanted my sister to sit with me, but she wouldn't. So Nathan came and sat with me and was talking to me and he got me to calm down. And even though that happened years ago, it's one of my favorite stories because it shows just how caring and kind Nathan has always been. He's always looked out for other people and he cared about everybody. I'm so thankful to have grown up with a friend like Nathan. I've known Nathan pretty much my whole since I've been going to school. He started out as friends in preschool. <sighs> Sorry. Growing up with him, he was such a good friend to the point he was more like family. <sighs> We used to go to each other's houses all the time. And I remember the first time I ever went to his house was, we took the bus after school, and all we could think about was food. We just wanted food. So on his mom's way home from work, she stopped and bought a bunch of Twinkies and some chips. And then, when she got home, me and Nathan both, ate a box of Twinkies to ourselves, and then felt sick to our stomachs. After that, Nathan had this little pond in his backyard, and there was this little boat you could go in it with. And so he asked, because I wanted to go in it, and they said, yeah. So we went to go lift the, flip the boat over and put it in, and there was this huge frog in there, the biggest I've ever seen. And Nathan screamed so loud and he dropped the boat while I was still holding it and ran right back into the house. <laughs> we never went in the pond. Nathan, my dear friend, I know you can see this from up there in heaven and I want you to know that I love and miss you very much. No. <clears throat> and you'll always be in my heart. Rest in peace, my friend, until we meet again. Love your friend, Kyle. Alright, we're gonna start the slideshow. <laughs> 